Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of In Your Neighborhood with the ICAA. Today, we'll be picking up where we left off on Commonwealth Avenue in Boston's historic Back Bay. So when the Back Bay was laid out, not only did it include uh, plots for single family houses, but there was a mix of architecture uh, and uses that were established early on in the context of the urban plan. So for example, at the beginning of Commonwealth Avenue at Arlington Street, we have the Ritz Carlton, now to be renamed as the Newbury Hotel. This was the premier hotel in Boston, and this was the gateway to the Back Bay. Other large mansions were converted to office use, and then a number of private clubs were designed and developed within the context of the Commonwealth Avenue ensemble. So all of these mixes of hotels and private clubs really celebrated uh, the social register of the time and really uh, embraced the quality of life. So my involvement in the Back Bay and its new renaissance really began about 1975. I've had the opportunity to do over 400 buildings over, most of them renovations, but also in a moment we'll take a look at a building that was new construction, it was an empty lot. So one of my favorite buildings, because I designed it from scratch, is 54 Com Ave. This was an empty lot that was a parking lot for the attendant apartment building to be converted to condos next door. And I was able to buy the property and we created this brand new building in 1985. We completed it. It's one of my favorites for a lot of reasons. So many of the Back Bay uh, homes had ironwork that were removed during World War II because of the, the need for metal. So it was a big drive to take all the fences away and use the metal to help create uh, airplanes and other things with those metal elements. So here, as new construction, we brought back the ironwork idea and ideology of the Back Bay in new construction. And one of the other th devices I used architecturally to enhance the development was a New York entryway, which you step down from the streetscape. And in doing so, and using concrete construction for the floor slabs, we we're able to create an extra floor in the building that really made the economics of this project work really well. It's quiet on the streetscape. It could have been an original building in many ways. And I'm forever grateful with the opportunity to be involved as the co-developer and the architect. One of the projects I was involved in 1984, 1985, as a developer, architect, and marketeer, if you will, was 22, 24, and 26 Commonwealth Avenue. I bought the buildings when they were uh, rooming houses, and I was able to convert them into condominiums. So this really was uh, a celebration of the new approach to living in the Back Bay that uh, many years later still speaks well for itself. Two interesting, uh, wonderful buildings were recreated at 128 and 130 Commonwealth Avenue uh, in the early 1900s, where there were two original brownstone facades were completely removed. And in the Parisian style, these new facades were inserted in the existing brownstone buildings to create uh, a whole new imagery that really uh, is unique to the Back Bay. In this tour, we've been celebrating the best of uh, the Back Bay in terms of lifestyle uh, and, and how people celebrated and enjoyed living in the Back Bay. Unfortunately, in June of 1972, in the Hotel Vendôme, which was just about complete as a condominium and retail conversion, there was a terrible fire and many firemen lost their lives. And here in the Commonwealth Mall, is a monument to those firemen who passed away in this fire. So here we are at the Hotel Vendôme, where my offices are currently located. This is a, a condominium uh, office and residential building that was uh, rebuilt after that fire in 1972, and um, really is an important limestone facade that takes up almost half a block in its presentation. and. Um, really is a wonderful place for me to uh, practice uh, my craft in. We're gonna move across the street in a moment to um, the Ames Mansion, which is in the process of being converted to residential use. Here we are at the Ames Mansion, 
beautiful historic mansion, wonderful detail intact. It really is one of the premier important large homes in the Back Bay. And adjacent to that is 312, 314 Dartmouth Street that I originally owned. And I had my offices there for many, many years. And I had bought the buildings from the Jesuits. And this was their, their headquarters here in Boston. This little tour has been a really a, an interesting way for me to look back on memory lane from my early years in the Back Bay and the projects that I've done. And I hope you found it very enjoyable and uh, look forward to continuing the dialogue in the future. Thanks so much.